My love extremist fam, it's me, Ethan. Today, we are gonna talk about abolition. Abolition as an act of love. This is the topic of a conversation I just had with my good friend, Richie Reseda. It's gonna be on Love Extremist Radio and I'll post a link in the comments. And I wanna talk about what I learned in this conversation on Clubhouse because it was super powerful and there's some important nuggets to take away. This is what being a love extremist is about. It's about facing some of the challenging topics in our society, in our interpersonal relationships, in our communities, and in ourselves, and working through them. So let's frame up how we look at punishment and law and people who commit crimes or do harm unto others. We are in a revenge culture. And our laws are actually built around this idea of revenge. If you do something illegal and harmful, you will be put in jail. You will be taken away. Unless you have a lot of resources and can avoid that and can pay for great lawyers and, you know, it's not a problem. But those who don't have those privileges are usually sent away. Police are called and they deal with those who commit harm. This is how we resolve conflict in our culture. And in our interpersonal relationships, oftentimes there's lower levels of this, right? In our interpersonal relationships, we might not want to deal with someone anymore. So we send them out of our lives. We're just like, you know what? That person's done. They're not allowed into my world anymore. I'm not comfortable with them. They've committed some harm to me and we can't work through it or there's conflict here and I'm not willing to resolve it. In some cases, that traumatic event is totally, ne like, that's necessary for healing, right? Sometimes something happens and we're not in a place where we can resolve it with the person who caused that harm. But more often than not, this has become a culture. It's a culture in our laws and it's a culture in our relationships. And as love extremists, we have an opportunity to change that. And that's what I talked to Rich Richie about, abolition. Abolition, usually we think, Prison reform, we think let's get rid of jails, let's stop eye for an eye punishment, let's stop putting people in cages, let's start treating human beings as human beings and recognize that though they may cause harm, they can reform, they can come back and change their behaviors and commit not to causing harm and even commit to being abolitionists and ending that harm altogether. And that's what Richie does. Richie goes around the world and talks about how he caused harm, but he also believes that the system that incarcerates people and locks them away for life is not a solution. And he believes that healing comes from confronting challenges and working through them and taking accountability. So a big part of being an abolitionist is about being for accountability. And in our culture, we don't really believe in accountability. We see accountability as, oh, you, you said you're guilty? Okay, lock you up, you're gonna get punished. But real accountability is actually being able to confront what you did and commit to never doing it again. That doesn't necessarily happen just because someone goes to jail. That happens because someone has been held in community and been held in a loving way and been asked to change and asked to commit to that change and maybe confronted the person that they victimized and apologized and also made a commitment that it will never happen again. That is the type of apology that can change culture. Richie put it in a really interesting perspective when he talked about the idea of a family member committing an atrocity. Let's say your mom went out and robbed a bunch of stores and it was illegal and the shopkeepers are upset and they call the police and the police are on the way to your house. And you're like, mom, why did you do this? What are you doing? You're gonna get taken away. But as your mom's son or daughter, or whatever relationship you have with her, you don't want that, her to be taken away, right? You don't want her to go to jail just because she robbed some stores. Perhaps she had a reason, perhaps she didn't, but you want her to return the goods. You want her to resolve the conflict. You want her to be able to stay in your family and be around. Now that can escalate all the way to murder or get to lower kind of misdemeanors and lower crimes. But regardless of where we're looking at the harm that was committed, when it comes to our families, we're all abolitionists. Nobody wants to see our people thrown away and locked up for life. That's not a solution and that doesn't resolve the problem. 
So if we can extract that human love and compassion we have for our families out to the world and recognize everyone has a family, everyone is going through a challenging time in their life at one point or another, everyone commits harm, and we need to be able to create systems that hold people accountable, make sure they don't do it again, but don't just erase them, cancel them from culture. And that happens in the prison system. It also happens in our interpersonal relationships. It also sometimes happens within ourselves. We shame ourselves so much so that we're not able to show up and be participants in society, show up in the world and contribute. And so I thought this was such an interesting revelation and the realization that our culture is based on this revenge, based on creating laws that are actually about enacting revenge and saying, oh, you hurt someone, you caused harm, we need to cause more harm to you. We need to lock you up and throw away the key. We need to make sure that you are harmed. Not that you never do this again. There's nothing in the judicial system that ensures that you never do it again. It's more so about harming you and hoping that works. But there's no proof that it does. So it's time for us to think about abolition as an act of love. And that's what this talk with Richie was all about. I hope you get a chance to listen to the full podcast because it was amazing. And I think as a love extremist, we need to get into these nitty gritty, dark and challenging topics and think about how we may enact revenge culture in our lives. Are we canceling people? Are we cutting people out of our lives because we don't want to deal with the conflict? Are we avoidant of resolving harm that we may have caused towards someone else? Is that something that we're afraid to do? Are we maybe feeling like we need to throw someone in jail because of something they did to us instead of actually resolving it and ensuring that they don't do that to someone else? Why? Let's think about this. Let's think about where we maybe are struggling to embrace abolition and how we can start to shift into a culture of acceptance a culture of recognizing that harm happens, resolving conflict in a healthy way, and thinking about how we can treat each other as humans, regardless of who we are, regardless of our privilege or lack thereof, and get onto the same playing field around resolution and supporting each other through the pain and through the challenges of being a human being. So that's what it's about. That's what love extremism is about. Check out the podcast. Join us on this mission, extremist.love. If you want to participate in future conversations with us, we host them on Clubhouse all the time, and I'd love for you to join us. So hit me up, uh, shoot a DM if you want to join Clubhouse. Right now it's Apple iPhone only, but soon it'll be Android as well. And I would love to see you there. Definitely subscribe to our channel because we're always talking about these important issues. And post some comments. What's your relationship to abolition? How do you feel about this conversation? And are you comfortable showing up as an abolitionist with love and denying or stopping this kind of revenge culture from perpetuating itself unilaterally across all strata of society? That's my mission here and that's something that I can stand behind. And I'm so grateful for people like Richie who teach me how to do that every day. So I appreciate you. Thank you for considering this challenging topic today. And I hope you check out the podcast and I'll see you soon. Peace.